That is why it is still called to this day the missing link. By the way, the missing link, it's still missing. No, it isn't. Hasn't been for a long time now. There was a missing link in 1859 when there were only two species of humans yet known in the fossil record and no intermediate fossils to link them to any other apes we knew of at that time. Since then, we found the fossils of thousands of individuals of dozens of hominid species, many of which provide a definite link to the other apes. But there were two particular pieces predicted to complete the puzzle. First, it was never supposed that we evolved from any ape species still alive today. Instead, the theory held that chimpanzees and humans were sibling species, daughters of the same mother. So the first link we needed to find was an ancient ape, apparently basal to either of us, to prove there was a potential progenitor of both groups. We had already found that link in Europe five years before Darwin went public. So we already had an evident chain of transitional species from which only one more link was needed. The theory then required that another extinct hominid be found in strata chronologically between the Miocene Dryopithecus fontana and the earliest known human species, which from 1891 to 1961 was Homo erectus. We found lots of candidates, as many as 50 species of apes which are now all extinct, but more than that, the theory also demanded that we find one halfway between humans and other apes in terms of morphology. We found exactly that, too, way back in 1974. Australopithecus afarensis proved to be a fully bipedal ape whose hands, feet, teeth, pelvis, skull, and other physical details were exactly what creationists challenged us to find, yet they're still pretending we never found it. But worse than that, we didn't just find that one. In 1977, three years after we discovered the no longer missing link in the human evolutionary lineage, Harvard paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould mentioned an extreme rarity of other clear transitions persistent in the fossil record till that time, and his comment, taken out of context, remains a favorite of creationist quote miners to this day. But in the more than 30 years since then, there has been a paleontological boon such that we now have way more transitional species and many more lineages than we ever needed or hoped for. Now the problem for evolution is that there are too many contenders, while a compounding problem for creationists is that not even one of them should exist if their story was true. And then there is this pesky little law of physics known as the second law of thermodynamics, the universal law of increasing entropy, or the universal law of decay. Stated simply, this law states what is a scientifically obvious fact, that over time, left to its own, without outside input of energy, every system, every system, from the smallest form of life or non-life to the universe itself, every system will wind down, run out of energy, decay, and or disappear. Okay, may I take this? Please. Because I love the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, Actually, people who say that the uh, second law of thermo thermodynamics uh, s uh, states that everything winds down and decays do not understand the actual second law of thermodynamics. Because what the second law of thermodynamics actually says is that in a closed system, the amount of entropy, which is the amount of energy that is no longer available to do work, will increase. The key factor here is the concept of a closed system. In other words, if you have like a source of heat sitting in a box that is closed and no heat can enter or, or exit the box, then eventually uh, that heat will sort of dissipate and spread out throughout the box and no longer be sort of a focused source of heat. The Earth isn't a closed system. You might no. have noticed, you might look at, notice if you walk out around noon on some days, that there's this big giant thing full of energy that is continuously beaming stuff down on the <laughs> Earth. Um, the second law of thermodynamics doesn't say anything in particular about how a system behaves when it's got energy coming in all the time. And as a matter of fact, if you want to believe that the second law of thermodynamics prevents, the law, uh, prevents evolution from happening, you have to also believe that just standing up and walking around is also prevented by the second law of thermodynamics. Because in a closed system, people tend to reach equilibrium with their environment, which means they reach the same uh, state as the, as the world around them, which is a condition technically known as dead. <laughs> people don't 
just drop dead from the moment they're born because they are constantly eating food and breathing air, which is generated thanks to plants and stuff that get energy from the sun, right? In other words, everything is naturally decaying and winding down. But wait, evolution says that everything for billions of years has been winding up evolving in an ever upward spiral of betterment of all of the species of life through the random process of natural selection. Gee, that sounds nice, except for that pesky little law. Darn that law. And that pesky little scientific fact that nothing winds up. Everything, everywhere in the universe, including the universe itself, is winding down. Darn that pesky little scientific fact. Not only does good science, known science, real science not support evolution, but common sense does not either. Now you may not wish to believe in God, that is your choice, but in order to believe in evolution, you would have to completely shut down your mind, decide to be ignorant, and then disregard the true scientific evidence that stares you in the face every day. But that would be, well, insane.